So, hey, Maria, welcome uh, to this debriefing session and, and congratulations on um, scoring a 705, uh, especially with the perfect Q90. First of all, how does that feel? It feels great. I'm really happy. I didn't really expect to get that score, but it was awesome. I wasn't shocked and I still are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a 705 is, is 99 percentile. Um, and, and especially, I mean, it's, you know, a Q90, uh, DI83 and a V82. So, so incredible quant, really good DI. And and I'd say good good enough verbal, just 80th percentile mm-hmm. verbal, but 100th percentile in quant. And, and as you said, 96th percentile in um in, in India. So so tell us a bit about your background and then tell me, you know, what were your, when you, when you started preparing for the GMAT, what were some of the challenges that you saw? So first, let's start with your background. What is it that you do or you're going to do? Uh, should... I, I just graduated from industrial engineering with a diploma in computer science in last December. Mm-hmm. And next week, I'll start working at a consulting firm. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited for that. And for the GMAT, uh, I've always wanted to do an MBA because I think my engineering background lacks some of like the business side. Mm-hmm. So I have, I've always had that idea in the future. Mm. So I wanted to get the GMAT out of the way before I start working since I had more time. So mm. I started preparing for the GMAT during my last semester in college. Okay. And, and, and so what made you choose EGMAT? Uh, for EGMAT, I heard about it during an internship. So mm-hmm. a lot of my peers were using it because they were applying to different MBAs. Mm-hmm. So uh, I talked to them, they showed me the platform and I found it really helpful to have everything in one place and get that like personalized study plan. Because when I started, I knew nothing about GMAT and mm-hmm. like it was really helpful to get everything in one platform. Okay. So when you build that personalized study plan, what did that plan actually tell you? I mean, what clarity did you get from it? Uh, it told me that like I had a lot to work on. I did that first mock mm-hmm. and my scores were not as high as, as I thought I was going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, coming from an engineering background, I thought a quant was going to be like almost covered. Mm-hmm. But I realized that I had a lot of like the basic stuff that I had not used in a long time because I was taking calculus or diff, uh, like really difficult probability You're doing courses. math essentially like like really hard math and like those basic properties or stuff that i learned in school were not as fresh mm. so i realized that like the preparing was gonna like take long um and it was gonna be like a long journey to mm. improve like slowly take take all the see all the videos and take the course like one step at a time one step at a time okay now, in terms of your other path, which is verbal and DI, you, you, you mentioned that you realized verbal was kind of your strength to begin with because of your, you know, the fact that you've done schooling, your high school from LA. So, so yes. So when, so, did, you, when did you have that realization? Uh, I think at the beginning, mm-hmm. uh, I realized that like, it was more about practicing, but mm-hmm. like I had those skills of, I was like, understanding all the questions understanding the the alternatives they gave me mm-hmm. but uh, I, I wasn't like like I did high school in the U.S. almost five no more six years ago because mm-hmm. my engineering program was long yeah so I didn't have that English as fresh but I could practice and get better mm-hmm. with like r- doing mocks and doing so, so, so when you took the mo- uh, the initial box, you kind of realize, okay, quant, you need to, you need really need a refresher. Verbal, you you had the fundamentals, you just needed to practice, and then DI, a lot of it because of the engineering background, you had it, but you needed to to brush certain concepts, and that was it. That was your takeaway. Okay. So yes. when you when you started with quant, what are the first thing that you do uh, that you did on on the platform, and how did that help you? I first went through the quant basics course. Uh, I wanted to do the quant course like mm. correctly and go through each step. So I did the quant basics, did the cementing, mm. and then started to do each of the each of the courses. Yeah, the courses. Mm. So I also had a little like notebook that I have around here. I don't know where it is, mm. where I would like write the properties and 
have mm -hmm. like a little summary of the courses. I know yeah. you get the, the summaries at the end, but I, I found it helpful to have my little notebook where I could go back and see like, okay, what was it, this property? How can I apply it to an exercise? What, what would you write down? Tell me. So anything that like I wouldn't have it as fresh. So maybe for, I don't know, for the cycles, for the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, the, when you would elevate the number, I would write those kind of things or the properties for the uh, different equations, mm -hmm. like, or uh, even or odd, like the tables, mm -hmm. like where, where you had to multiply or divide what I would get. So all of the, like those kind of things that I would have to remember, mm -hmm. I would write them down. Okay. So and then, how, yeah. So then I could like go through them. And like during my last week of preparation, I did a lot of mocks, but I also studied from my little notebook. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that'd be really nice to, to see that. So, so how often, other than the last week, how often did you revise from that notebook? Um, not that much. I think it was when I had doubts. Mm -hmm. Like, so if I did some practice questions, mm -hmm. I would go through a question. And then when I went through the solutions, I would see if I had those properties in my notebook. Or... Got it. Okay. So, so after the quant basics, then you started with what number properties? Yes, I think so. Okay. So what did you, what were the key things that you refreshed or learned in number properties? Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly right now, but I would go through the course like one step at a time and use the diagnosis quiz mm -hmm. uh, with the pace engine you have. So mm -hmm. I would skip the lessons that I was strong in mm -hmm. and I would do all of the ones that I needed to Got grow on. So, so yeah, you did You make use of the pace engine. I can really see that. Um, and, and, and so that definitely helped you and and one of the things that i really noticed was as you really said hey you were rusty in many areas mm -hmm. um, i am actually um, uh, let me just share my screen uh, uh let me see if i can share this yeah so um yeah so i can you see your screen this is your account here yes okay so um so in, in in this, this is have have you ever seen this view? This is you usually probably saw this view. I saw that one, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we we look at this journey view, which tells us how you're doing compared to others, and mm -hmm. uh, and and one of the things which is very unique about the quant course is that in the quant course you have uh, these things called learning activity. You can see yeah. times process skill learning activity one a, and here you can see you have a grade C in this case which means you were in the bottom 50% of all EG mm -hmm. matters. So, so this is a comparative grade, but you did it so well that in the practice quiz, which is where, you know, you learn in, in learning activity and then you, you apply that learning in the practice quiz, you have a grade A uh, where, where you got a hundred percent here. And, mm -hmm. and, and so this is incredible. Why? Because uh, um, what it showed is how well you learned in this case, because um, uh, only about twenty percent of people, fifteen to twenty percent of people, get a hundred percent score in this. Mm -hmm. So, so and and I can tell you, a lot of them actually do not. They they get a score a lot higher than forty five percent. So, so even though you got a lower score, the what you learn from the learning in this um, uh, activity that that replicated with the, with a the really high score over here, that is the same thing in 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 the GMAT skills learning activity. You got a grade C again over here. Mm. And then you can really see you have a grade A in the in the practice quiz. So you you you, you definitely were very rusty, which is why the grade C mm. here. But then that learning was your you, your quality of learning was so good that that you actually were able to apply it right then and there. And mm. and uh, so, and that's the same thing that I'm looking at a bunch of other places over here. For example, here again a grade B in the in the learning activity, and then. Uh, a grade A in the practice quiz where you know you got an eighty two percent in this case. So 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 incredible effort while while you know your the focus is 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 there for you. And I'm really, really happy to 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 see that. So um uh and, and I'm sure you felt that way because I mean a Q90 is a perfect score. So so that mm -hmm. definitely is the case. Um 
so when you look at you, you've spent a lot of time in algebra as well mm. and, and and you particularly did well in the algebra course so was algebra an area of concern for you in your mocks and um, not really i i think a lot of the concepts i knew them mm -hmm. but like i didn't remember them so as like i went through a course i i like picked it up really quickly mm. because like i feel like gmat is not like it doesn't like test on complicated yes stuff yeah. it's just like the basics and if you you have them in the past like getting that refresher and getting mm. back on it it's not as hard oh, oh it's not it's not rocket science at all absolutely not but it, it definitely tests you uh, uh, on your ability to make good decisions because it's not mm. a test of math to that degree it's a test of logic so mm. um, so so that's where uh, you have to be extremely careful and uh, while while answering questions here and 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 this is the same thing that i'm seeing again with the with with a bunch of other things in algebra so when i look at your your scores here um let me just share this again you can see the same thing here where you have a grade c in learning mm. activity um and then you have a grade a in in the following practice quiz uh, very very similar grade b in learning activity and a grade a in in the following practice quiz so that is that is incredible in in this case so and then you for this entire course uh this has seven learning levels from ll0 to ll6 mm -hmm. and 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 you have just one b but otherwise you have an a or an a minus in each of the learning levels so that combined puts you in in the top mm -hmm. uh 12 15 percent of all eg math students out there and, and, and so i think also like what you were showing from the learning activity to a practice activity it was really helpful for me to go through solutions like even if i had got them right like i would uh, watch the video and see how they would solve it so i think i really learned it a lot from the learning activities and then i had i was able to apply it for the quizzes and that's i think for me the hallmark of a diligent student as you said even if you get got it right uh, you you okay. still saw the solution. That's someone who truly wants to learn, and and a lot of people don't realize this. You know, stuff such as taking notes, um, and 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 just doing these little things while learning, mm -hmm. they save you a ton of time later on, and and they help you get the kind of uh, Q ninety that you have. Now um, let's go towards uh, uh, you know your 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 mocks uh, overall. So in your mocks, you weren't scoring as high. Uh, no, what, no. Right, and and so what are the main? What is, in your opinion, the main reason that that you were struggling in mocks? Um, my uh, during my mocks, I think verbal and data insights were similar to my scores nice. in the real exam, but for me, it was quant. I was struggling with timing. Yes, I was taking too long in some questions, and mm. then I would have to rush through the other ones. So I think uh, the mocks helped me a lot to identify that problem and like solve it before taking the actual exam. Yeah. So I think, yeah, when I looked at it, you're, you, you did a bunch of the GI and TA, you were doing really well there. And then also in mocks, you were able to replicate that performance because on the EGMAT mocks, you got an 83 as well in, in DI, the same score that you got on, um, yes. on the actual exam. And the co side, I can definitely see the timing struggle. So, so I am, um, with regards to this, and because your highest score, I think, on, on EGMAT mocks was an 84 or an 85 in quant. And, uh, yes. and, and and so how did you tackle the timing issue? So what decisions did you take on the actual exam that helped you overcome this timing issue? And how did that translate into success in the actual test? Uh, for the actual exam, I try to uh, have like a maximum time for mm -hmm. each question. Mm -hmm. So I was like thinking that like if I was taking more than four minutes for a question I had to like pick one and go go along with it and I think that happened only mostly for the first question of the exam it took me longer I was like getting stressed because I knew I had that timing issue with quant mm -hmm. but once I got through that question I was able to take the time that I needed for the next ones and by the end it was I think it was the first time I had to like time to go back and check some of my quant questions. Yeah, I, I think your quant score report, if we can share that, would be really nice. 
because it has some really important learnings that are there. Yeah, I can share. Let me. I'll share my screen. First. Yeah. So um. I go down. Yeah, if you go to the timing chart that you have. So yeah, I know this is not rendering properly, but the first question is where you took 6.7 minutes. And, and yes. But then after that, every other question till question number what 14 is, is below the Thir line. Yeah, 13. Till th th yeah, even including 13. For the next 12 questions, you were right below. You, you were really good with regards to timing. And even after that, you had a few questions that were that, where you took longer. But then you had a bunch of other questions where you did not take as long. So so and and you changed three questions towards the end. So you had time. I I went through the questions through three, but I didn't edit any of them. I stayed with my first answer. Okay. Good job. <laughs> <Continue>. <laughs> yeah, I mostly went back to the first one hmm. because it was the one I was like worrying about. It. But I said, okay, just Leave it as it is. This was my cho first choice. I'm mm. not sure about any of the others. I won't change it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's something which is good. And I think one of the other things which is there is, you know, everyone thinks that, hey, you need to take two and a half minutes per question. It's never the, it's the uh, two, two and a half minutes is the average. On a per mm -hmm. question basis, there'll be many questions with, where that you'll solve much more quickly. As you can see, in, in, in Maria's um, chart here and there'll be other questions which will take you longer and that's the nature of questions but in the end it'll balance out because as someone who's gotten a Q90 you still had time left in the end to mm -hmm. make sure that you go through certain questions and so I think that's, that's evidence that uh, you will have enough time so so yes so as long as you 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 make good decisions during the test uh, uh, you should be fine Overall. I also, one of my strategies was to know like the half time. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that like by the half, half of the time, I wanted to be in the middle of the questions to like have that time at the end. Perfect. I was thinking about that too. All right. That sounds wonderful. I think that's, that's true. So I think it's really important to know thyself to really say, these are my strengths. This is one area that I need to work on, or these are four areas that I need to work on and work on them in a focused fashion. In your case, you know, quant was an area you worked on it in a focused fashion. I can see the grades are incredible. Um, then, then the other thing is the timing piece, and you also worked on it. So, how many mocks did you take in total? I took the five on EGMAT, and then I took the two official ones that they gave you. So, and, you and, and, and and when did you take these mocks during your preparation? I took one at the beginning, one about halfway, mm -hmm. and then I did a lot of them my last week. I would take a mock in the morning mm -hmm. as a test, and then during the afternoon, I would like go through the questions and see the solutions. So, so I did that like yeah, four days I, I, in the, during my last week. During your last week. So and how long did you spend to analyze the mock once you attempted it? Uh, a couple of hours, I think. A couple of hours. So, what and what would you look for? I would look for the wrong questions and I'm trying so to walk, see. Walk, walk, me, walk me through your routine. So, you see a question you've answered incorrectly. What would you do next? I would try to solve it first. Okay. And see if I could get to the right answer. And if not, uh, for your mocks, I would watch the video. And for the official ones, I would look online or. Uh, have someone help me solve the question. Like I wouldn't go through the next one until I knew how to solve it. Okay. And 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 so when you saw the solutions in our mocks, in the EGMAT mocks, how did the solutions help you improve? Um, they helped me improve because they it gave me more tools of how to solve those type of questions. Mm -hmm. And I think as I did the mocks, I realized that the questions kind of repeated the, themselves. Like there were a lot of questions that were similar, so similar, I could apply yeah. this. The, I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, yeah, repeated. And no, no, repeated, but like the, type the same of, concepts that they test. Yes, the same concepts. So like some strategies I have learned mm. while revising one mock helped me answer some questions correctly in the next one. And mm. as as I did more mocks, I realized what my strengths were and where I had to work on. 
Yeah, and I think the the nice so when you took mocks and you you revised them, did you also add notes to your little notebook there? Um, I think most of the things were in my little notebook, but mm -hmm. I highlighted them, and it was like yeah, trying to keep track what was there that I still like didn't have in my mind, and I had to like memorize or like repeat and be be mindful of. Okay, and, and and so so which means that even though you did not have an official error log, error log per se, mm. or did you have an error log? I we didn't we didn't. No. Okay. No, even I. Though, so this was your error log in many ways. Yeah. And 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 really good focused effort towards the end helped you help push your score that way. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So that's incredible. I mean, it's just uh, it, it, you can build your own tools and and then do really well mm. as long as you're methodical and as long as you know what where you need to improve on that's just yeah. what uh what this proves to me so so um all those people who you know who, who recommended egmat to you do they know that uh you've taken the gmat now no they don't know yet i haven't seen them i okay. think all a lot of them i'll see them next week because i'm going into the same consulting firm where i did my internship mm -hmm. so i think i'll see all of them there and I'll tell them about it. And okay. it was really good for me that they recommended EDMAT. I didn't really know where to start. And it was nice to know people that were trying to go through the same journey and were using the platform and found it helpful. So they were who started like this journey for me. Okay. Well, thank them from my side. It's <laughs> always good to, to, to get uh, recommendations from, from past students. Uh, that's absolutely helpful. So, yeah. Definitely thank them um, overall. So, um, so yeah, that's good luck and good luck. And I know you. I saw which schools you're planning to apply to. So, so good luck uh, for the same. And uh, thank you. Yes, and and I. I mean, you have an incredible score. Uh, it's ninety nine percentile, and and it'll it's good enough for any school in the world. Um, and and you know, we're talking about Javier. I think she's in Wharton right now. If memory. I, see, I know she's in Harvard. She's in Harvard. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have to reach out to her as well. It's been a couple of years since we spoke with her. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since we mm. spoke with her. So I'll reach out to her to really find out how she's doing. So, so yeah. Awesome.